Hello, everyone. Today, I just noticed that, like OBS, when you when you say something, like it shows the audio level of what you're saying, but if you wait a little bit, it'll only slowly go down. Like, what? I thought it was supposed to tell me the, the current amount, but I guess it's meant to show you like, well, no, it also has a little icon for the peak. So, I don't know. It's more and more confusion. Anyway, today we have, let me just check my VPN thing is on. Yep. Um, we've updated to Ubuntu 22.10. And we're ready to finish this parser, hopefully. So let's go to uh, I'm not entirely sure where I'm supposed to be going. I guess the pass the parser here. Um yeah, vim pass dot nas. Alright. So one thing I think we might want to consider after thinking about it, we've already had like a rubbish English discussion. I think we can drop the length. Um, because we can just determine that based on, oh no, we can't. We need that to know for the primitives. All right, no, that's fine. I mean, unless you went with null termination. Um, yeah, you're good at remembering things. Let's see. Would I do cooking on Twitch? No. So let's see. Um, so when passing a tag, we're going to peak, we're going to expect a, uh, the at symbol then we will read, then we will copy a word, then we will skip space. I become the cooler Henry's kitchen. Yeah, that makes sense. So after we've done all this, um, we will, I guess right now we're just going to have to push that and we add the t uh, tag buffer. And then we, yeah, so I've already written that code. So let's create a tag buffer. I think I would have written it in pass.back. What am I doing? I can use Vim for this. So down here. So uh, we're going to add, we're not going to call these prefixes or anything. Uh, I guess we will. Global uh, uh, tags. Um, I guess we're going to call this the tags buffer. And we will have the tags buffer len. We will reserve 128. Um, so the, we don't want to reserve. We actually probably want to put the actual size there. Um, I believe I've already done something like that in logic.nas. Kind of. So tag buffer max is here minus tags buffer. The so tags buffer max. And then tags buffer length is going to be two. And that will be 128. That might not be enough, actually. Uh, but we'll see. Um, actually, let's just search up Twitch tags bar, for example. Uh, Twitch bot tags cap. And let's just see how long these things are. These are giant. Like, what the hell? Wow. How long is that? Just set that to a string. 
333. Wow. Um, fuck it. We'll just say that it's going to be 512. And so what we will do here is we'll put tags buffer. We'll set it to the max tags buffer max length max. Now, um, tags buffer length. After all this, we will set tags buffer length. So we will, um, we now have CX. Oh yeah. So move tags buffer length CX, but we need to subtract the, we need to subtract this is weird. We need to subtract tags buffer length max. Um, but if we do sub CX tags buffer length max, that's going to give us uh, uh, an inverted thing. Can we sub what's the, what's the opposite of sub? I guess we could burn a temporary register. Um, oh no, what we could do is we could move tags buffer length there, the CX, and then we would subtract CX from, can we do that? Can we subtract a memory location, a uh, value from a memory location? Like we dereference it. Let's search this up. Um, 8086 sub instruction. I think Google, now that I'm using like an, an, uh, a VPN to search things, Google's suggestions are all just completely ruined a little bit. Um, so we subtract a value from a memory location here. So subtract immediate six, 16, which would be, no, we would, we would subtract a register from a memory location. Um, but the, oh no, we, hmm. The memory location is constant. We kind of like want the opposite. We want to subtract an immediate. Oh, hmm. We want to subtract um, a register from a memory location. This might be it. Subtract R16 from a memory location. So I think we can do that. So we put the max length in um, the length buffer and then we subtract it. All right. And we should see how that goes. We will have to test this. Um, we have a pass message thing. Um, let's see. I think the logic calls that pass message. Um, we won't worry about the tags buffer or anything. So if it's not ping, we will call pass message. Actually, let's just do the same thing. We will call pass message and then we will, um, I guess we will just break, um, here. We will break at this point um, at the return here. Uh, no, the do pass here. And pass message will first do call pass tags. And then it will return. And that should be fine. Actually, we'll just do do pass and then we'll do return because this is also the kind of the same thing. 
Um, so this might actually be fine. And so we will also want to be able to test it and dump all our stuff, all our, all our hot stuff. Um, I guess we could just test this by doing pass message. I mean, if we're writing unit tests, we might as well just test it that way. All right, so let's see. Um, let's open this up. And we'll go to the test code. Is it cheating to write tests? So we want to um, test pass tags and we'll do a test pass tags for normal. Boy, test pass tags normal. And we will do a thing here. And instead of looking at the parser function, we want to look at um, extern int pass uh, tags length. Uh, that should be short. Uh, unsigned short and extern car pass tags. And this is not null terminated. So we will just set that as a point and we will be careful. Um, bu, 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 bu. We might just have to do that and then cast it. That seems fine. So, uh, we will probably want to clean up this code too. Um, it has some patterns in it. Yep, uh, actually editing this without Vim is terrible. Let's just open it with Vim. Okay. Uh, let's just grab all the pragma stuff and just dump it up here. So there we go. Um, and this is just going to do, I guess it can just do that. It's already doing that. Um, and let's see. Let's do W make and see if anything's really broken. Do pass not defined. How dare you? Oh, no, the do pass should be defined. Again, how dare you? Copy word dot return not defined. Ah. Uh, ah, uh, it did define it. How dare you? Okay, 103. Copy word dot return is not defined. Did I not do it? Hmm. I, th I thought this would be fine. What if we do this? Copy word dot return. That's actually seriously concerning that that's broken. Uh, because it's not breaking for the other stuff. Which must mean what's pass end do? Oh, that doesn't do anything. Maybe that's why. All right, let's do test pause. 
All right. Uh, we don't need to return that. Expect stuff is more of a light look ahead. I don't know what that to do is about, but we have our tags buffer. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to go over here and we're just going to quickly read through this code. Um, is there a way to simplify this? Well, each time we have an out buffer and that's the same, we have data and that's kind of, ah, uh, the, the hello, the read and write stuff, this is all determined by the input. So what we could do is um, we could do character out and we'll do pass data and set up a pass data. Uh, pass data in, pass data out. And so what we'll do is we will set up pass data um, in it, pass data, data in, in, out. Right. So let's just focus on that for now. So data, in out. So void init pass data, um, struct parser data. That should be parser data. Data. And then we have character in and character out. This will put that there. I don't know if we can just do the length of out there. Um, and then we will just do, do we always do out 16. Whatever, it's fine. And so what we'll do is we'll set data in out equals zero data length read equals three length of in data and right green pill you and lab grow I mean I don't know some people want that data red equals in data white equals that and so let's see if that works and then we can copy that I can find the correct damn terminal That actually compile? What the hell? No. Assertion failed. Data lot length equals size of out. So that didn't work. Let's try passing a pointer to that. Oh, I also didn't set that to be correct. So maybe that's the issue. Should we really have things just because people want it? I don't know. Is there a harm going on there? Length right equals size of out. What if we set this to 16? That still fails. What if we set that to 16 there? All 
right? So what is happening? Do I need to do size of out divided by size of out because it's an array? I think that's kind of what I need to do. No, let's do printf size of out divided by size of out. Spinal fluid capture yourself. What? Actually, let's just copy test. Um, there's a test bat. I oh, will just ignore that. So it's saying the size is two, uh, which isn't correct. It's just past the size there, outsize, we won't worry about it. Oh, it's raining. All right, uh, this is a bit more complicated than I thought. Perhaps we should have Hmm. How about we have I don't know, I haven't looked into it. Um, let's just focus on DOS today. So for our tests, we want to have that. And then we want to have a second pass of data. Data two equals data. And then we just want to compare them. Um, but let's just fix this. Let's just say 16 to do. That copy it. Can we just copy stuff in C like that? Probably. Um, let's do compare uh, assert parser data 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 two, and then what we will do is we will do void compare parser data data one. Struct parser data data two. Hang on. Let me turn off my noise gate so you, uh my uh thing so you can hear the rain if you can't already. There does that sound cool? Yeah, I, I'm not reading all that. Sorry, buddy. In out. Length read. Length write. Read write. And then we just want to do um, assert data one. Uh, yank that equals data to paste that. Oh no, I messed up the macro. Okay, assert data one in out 
Yeah, it's not great. And then for this test, what we're going to do is say, the only difference is that um, we want to check that ret is zero. And we want to do data to dot in out equals character h. So we're going to do data and data two. Let's see if this works. That's not good. So this seems to work. So let's try and simplify our tests a little more. Data in, data out equals data. Um, data out dot in out should be that. Um, So we've in out, um, and then we have in string and out and ret. We might have to macro that up a bit. See data I keep opening the wrong terminal. Why do I do that? So it's this one? No, it's this one. No, it's DOS. I, oh, I'm so used to opening Linux terminals that I just blink past DOS box. What are you sorry for? Um, okay. That I'm having trouble with DOS. Yeah, it's fine. Um, so what we're going to do here is have int ret equals um, pass a test with hello um, and then we will do data in and data out. That seems fine. Oh, no, we have we have uh, we will declare variables maybe. Hmm. The problem here is that like, uh, I guess what I could do is kind of make a fake test here. Pass test, um, test peak normal. Um, then we have a hello. Um, then we have data in, data out, and we just have out. I 
Okay, so let's do define pass test um, name um, in string function. And what that will do is expand to um, name void character n equals in string and we'll just copy all this you know only recently have I been thinking maybe macros are a good thing to have in a programming language Drop all this here. Um, we'll put that there. We'll do data in dot data out, and then we will do um, check pass func zero and so what this will do is just do ret val this will do that and that This might solve our test problem where we say data out dot in out is that and then we check that and then we also check um, the value of out. Function prototype in block scope. Oh, I see. I've got the extra thing there. That's nice. Oh, we could just do that, huh? Body. Now let's try seeing how this would work for no space. Um, there's no characters left. So we set the same value thing we set data data in dot length equals zero. Set length in length read equals zero. Test peak no space. That failed. Oh. Huh? Oh. Huh? So this should model all the things that changed. So link thread 
doesn't equal length red. I think because we need to change those explicitly there. Yeah. So this is actually pretty good. Reads a single character to in out. So test read normal. Um, length read equals data in dot length read negative one. Oh crap, we can do this. Just do that. That's probably not the best way to do it. Ah, oh, whatever. No, it's not. So it reads a single character. Oh, so it should actually just be data out dot length read has changed. So that should be zero and assert out. Uh, we should want to do data out dot in out equals character H. And then data out dot read plus equals one. That should be minus equals one. Let's see if that works. Um, length read is not set. So when we read a single character, is it not decrementing at length read? Um, let's uh, add our own new assert. Um, void, uh, let's do define new assert. And we'll have a value and we'll have expected. And then we will do if val doesn't equal expected, uh, print f uh, line assertion failed val doesn't equal expected. And then we will add a new line to that. And we will say, and then we'll write got, val doesn't equals that, got, um, Val, uh, got val. Got, I guess we have to put like, um, I, this is where things get tricky. I guess we'll just do I. Int val. How about we do assert int or assert short. Um, and then we will do error at file and then we put line and then we will put val 
and then we will just go quit, I guess. Abort. Let's see if this works. And we'll just do a search. Uh, what's the current failing thing? Uh, length equals red. A search short, length equals red. There, let's do dobby make. All right, so this is failing already, but that's okay. Let's just set that to abort then. Abort has not been declared. Um, is that like a quit? What com abort function? Automated testing for open Whatcom C++ and DOS. Ah, uh, okay. That's a bit weird that you would make that. Um, let's see, assert. Assert. Oh, it would be exit, I think. Um, so let's just remove that for a second. Oh, let's put exit, exit zero. Exit one, I guess. Um, yeah, let's try that. Um, what's exits? STD lib? Hang on, I think my computer's doing something weird. Um, let me just check. Maybe it's trying to build something. What are you doing? Percent CPU. Um, looks like Windows is doing something. Hang on a second. Sorry about this. Um, I will just set Windows to pause there. All right. Or is it the Ubuntu VM that's doing stuff? What's happening? Firefox is using up all my memory? Why? What the hell's happening? I guess Firefox was just, it was too much. Okay. Let's try this. I am not good, am I, at this? All right, and that should have quit. So then we wanna add our assertion message. I'm very good and you're proud of me. Oh, thanks. Let's start simple. We're gonna say we print the assertion failed value. And then we exit. See, see this token pasting has 
confused me. Is it just one? All right. So I think it should more accurately be like that. Maybe I need to put some pastes around it. Come on, we're, we're close. Is it that? Is it because I, uh, wait, what's that doing there? Maybe I'm just bad at writing C. Argument for whatever must be a mac macro. Is file and macro not a real thing? Oh, maybe. Syntax error? Why? Is it because of those? error at file and I guess this is because line is not a string so we'll do that and then we will do line all right so we also need to um, add the expected. All right, so we now have some better asserts. So let's edit these. All right, let's see if that helps. All right, so line 68. Oh, that's not that helpful, is it? What if we just do this? Um, we define, actually we could just probably inline that. And why not? We'll put the data in there as well. Because why not?
we got some macros there. We might as well use them. Slash slash style comment continues on next line, but I didn't use one, did I? Oh, there's a to do there. Um, yeah, we don't need to have that. Actually, now that we can do that, we can just do size of out. There's data one. Uh, that should be data. Uh, Data one should be data in and data two should be data out. Must be pointer. All right. And same thing here. Init parser data. Yeah, we remove that. All right, now let's see. Data dot length thread line a hundred. Line a hundred. I guess that would be here. Wait, did I just recompile the source, source code or something? Line 100, I guess that's close enough. Um, so length red. Should be negative one, red should be one. So reading a single character Got five. One, two, three, four, five. Is test read not decrementing the length? Data in dot length red equals. Yeah, it's not, it mustn't be incrementing it. Uh, decrementing it or wait a minute it's incrementing the length thread maybe data in dot length thread should be four have we found a bug no I don't think so. What if we comment that out and we just check the other stuff? Or have I changed it from, should I change it to read here? Um, so it actually works. No, not bot test. Test parse. No, that should still work, right? Unless peak is hard coded up here. It is. Check parse func. So we need to remove the func there and add func here. And that would be read. Ha 
huzzah, it works. And we should have error if there's no space to read. Um, so length read equals to zero. And that should be one. Oh, that should be test read no space. I wonder how it would like globally add tests. Probable cause missing one. All right. Uh, data in dot length read should be zero and data out dot length read should be zero. All right, that's fine. Uh, and we want to um, copies a single character from read to write. Here we have hello. Um, so it should decrement length read. It should um, decrement length read and length write and increment read and increment write. And then we do read and it should be fine. Uh, no, this is copy, test copy normal. That should be H. Um, did I close DOSBox? Assertion failed 72. Uh, we need to expand that macro though. Ah. Okay. Watch this. Watch this. Oh no, that wouldn't work. Would it, would it work if we parameterized assert int um, and then this would be um, file line um, and then we do s and then we do file line and all assert int does is call assert int val expected um, file line. Does that help? See, this is where C macros get uh, into not a good place. In fact, they get into a very bad place. Too many errors. Syntax error. Let's just do high zero. Let's just do that for now. So file and line, let's try that.
My god, it worked. What the heck? All right, check, pass, copy, test, copy, normal. What's wrong? Oh, data out dot in out should be H. Mm -hmm. Error if there's no space to read. So this is just test copy, no space read. And we just set length read to zero. Um, and the output, sorry, data in dot length read, so data out dot length read dot zero. And that should just give us an error. So that replaces all that. All right, that's fine. Um, and the same if there is no space to write. Check that that one works. All right, and then we have copy word. Copies a word from read to write, and this is where things get a little bit difficult. So let's see if our approach scales up. Test copy word normal. So we have hello world. Um, and so what we would expect is data out um, len read um, one, two, three, four, five, minus equals six, length right, minus equals five, um, read plus equals six, write plus equals five. word um, in out should be space and we want to assert that out uh, we want to do string compare out hello um, let's just do character word equals hello Um, in word length equals string length word. Then we'll check that out has copied. So we want to read uh, word length plus one. No, we only want to read the word length. Um, length right, word length because it peaks it. Okay. Oh, we have two of those. So we remove that one. And that works. Um, Copy is no word if we start with a space. So we just do that. And basically everything should be the same. It should just, um, copy nothing, yeah.
Yep, and now we want to uh, test skip space. Skips a sequence of spaces. So we have test skip space normal. Hello, and that should just give us spaces equals one, two, three. So it'll read, it doesn't write anything. It should have the H as the character um, read. Skip spaces, or is it skip space? And we'll do skip space, skips no spaces, and this will just be the same thing, but with just a H. And then we will have to add our test pass tags in a minute. But that's significantly made things easier for us. Data out, link thread, minus, oh. Spaces. I would just do minus equals three for that. Why would they steal the money? Data in read equals five one two eight, but it's actually five eight one uh, five one three one. Oh, that's right. Um, read should skip the spaces. Look at me, I'm smart. There we go. All right, so. Um, tests pass, uh, passing. Some tags and we'll say we have at hello there, hello world space not passed. And so what we expect in out would be the space. Um, it won't write to out. It will have the same registers, but I know it should, it'll tell us what it's read. So data out dot read length. Um, minus equals, so we have character tags equals hello world. So we've read the tags um, and the white space. So we'll say there's three white spaces there. And we'll say read has plus equal um, int read amount equals string tags plus three. Bug meat is still meat. Yeah, comes from animals. But what about muscles and stuff? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to string compare
bugs have muscles, right? We'll put the at there, and then we'll put those spaces there, just to say. So we'll compare um, uh, tags buffer. int tags buffer um, buffer length tags max equals tags buffer length character tags buffer We have our actual tags there. So we want to string compare our tags buffer um, with tags buffer length. And we want to set the size. So it's string compare tags length. Um, tags buffer length, tags length old minus, it should be tags length old minus tags length. All right, this is a bit of a tricky one, isn't it? But let's see. This file be deleted. Hell yeah. Test skip base, skip space. So um, this should be test pass tags normal. And now it's giving me errors. What call cannot convert argument to? Put too many arguments there because I am not always paying attention. Uh, read length, that should be length read. Passes, tags, and following white space. Pass tags is an undefined reference. Uh, test pass. Data in out doesn't equals one one ten. Wait, what? All right, that's from something else getting messed up. Um, data in out doesn't equals one one ten. Actually, check this out. If we do this, and we do this, oops, we call this, and we call this um, li uh, file line, and then we go down, we add file line, and we can do uh, check pass, uh, hang on, let me turn my noise stuff back on for my microphone. It's probably very annoying now. There we go.
and then we do check pass func, and that will just call check pass func func red val func red val. And let's see if that fixes that line. Line 195. Um, that actually messes it up a bit more. Um, excuse me? Um, bit confusing there. It's even further away, actually. Oh, this is counted as one line because it's a macro. Ah. Uh. That ain't cool, bro. All right, uh, it's better at least. So, test pause 195. Data in out 1110. Oh wait, that, that actually undoes that because it was expanding before at least. I think. So instead of 195, It's now 194. All right, whatever. <laughs> that had basically no meaning. All right, so at least we know which, which one it's in. All right, so data in, data in out is not 110, it is 64. Um, which is a little strange. I don't know why it would say 110. Let's look at that ASCII table. So, decimal 110 is N, and instead it is 64, which is D. What? How would it be, how would it be D? What if we change this to N, will the test pass then? No, in and out is still 164. Sorry, no, not 164, 64. That's weird. Where would it be getting 64 from? Again, let's just check. 64 is the at. So we set, we set up the tags buffer, we peak and then we expect at. So is it failing at the do expect? What if we just comment these out and just always consume the first character? Yeah, what's up cat? Mm-hmm. Tags buffer length doesn't equals two five nine seventeen. 
Why is the length that big? It should be extern. Extern int tags buffer. Oh, it's wait. Um, let's find out aux thing. Tags buffer. Tags buffer buffer length buffer length. And I guess I can just do that. Learn character tags buffer int tags buffer length. Pragma orcs. All right, so this is tricky. Um, let's see tags buffer. See int tags buffer, int tags buffer. Oh no, wait, that should be character tags buffer, and this should be int tags buffer length. Does that help? Can we just cast things? Tags buffer length doesn't equals eight three oh nine. We got eight three twenty. It shouldn't be that though. Why is it? Why is tags buffer length that big? Is that because it's uninitialized memory? All right. Hmm. What if it's 5.12? Got 8.3.20. What? All right, what if we do tags buffer length equals 512? No, I can't cast that. Um, How do we put a default value there? Oh, we can't. This this also doesn't set the value each time. Um, let's just say um, it's 512 and that's the implementation detail. Um, tags buffer max. Meow meow, is it meow time? So tags buffer is still too big. Why? Why, 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 why? That usually indicates failure. Should I be checking the return value first? What well, is? So the return value is successful. But 
it's uh, subtracting. What if we don't do the subtraction? So doing the subtraction does nothing. Wait, is tags buffer max wrong? Where is this value coming from? What if we just set it to 10 there, right? We set it to 10. Okay, we set it to... Oh, shit. This should be equals, I think. Maybe. Hang on. I think I've messed up here. I think I put a value into memory. All right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. What? Should that be... What? Equals that minus log buffer. Tags buffer length doesn't equals 501, got 8320. Where was it getting this 8320 bullshit from? Okay, we're gonna move 512 there. Still got the same error. Um, we're going to move 512 to the length. Are we not setting length? Are we dereferencing something twice? I don't understand. Invalid combination of opcode and operands. Have you tried putting it into jelly? Um, that could help. So tags buffer is a pointer. Tags buffer length is also a pointer. Maybe. What if I dereference things like that? Just use DI as a temporary. I don't want to get my debugger out. Huh. Well, let's simplify this and grow, go into the debugger. Yeah, I don't know where it's getting 8320 from. That sounds like uh, horse manure. Window. Modules, pause, and we want to go over to class tags and run to that. 
Um, Run to cursor. All right, data registers. So we move our tags buffer to di, 1e80. We move our tags buffer size to cx, 512. Great. Uh, now, this instruction here, move tags buffer length, cx. So let's just quickly Move word pointer 280CX. So what's at 280? Nothing. And then we step past and it puts two there. Two eighty, two eighty one, two eighty two. Right, kiss blue, kiss blue demo man. No, wait. So we moved CX word CX to two eighty, and it just put O two. Oh, that is correct. So that works. So we call copy word. Um, that copies the word. We subtract CX from that. And we get OB. Then we return. And it's OB. Um, that indicates what's, uh, hex 8320, 2080, that's the, uh, address. Is it possible that, oh shit. These are pointers. NASM is giving me memory addresses, not actual values. How could I be so foolish? Medic. I think I need to. Just glue stuff like that. The length is not 501. It is instead 11. Why is it 11? Why is it 11, blur? Blur? Bro? Hmm. All right, yeah, so we can kind of see that I do need tests for my programming style because I guess I'm a hack. <laughs> All right, um, let's go to window modules, pass, and we go down here and we will have to watch the registers here. So let's run the cursor, data registers. So we move the amount to CX, holy shit. Um, this thing supports macros. 
What the hell? That's metal as heck, actually. Alright, so... CX is now 1F... 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 No, my test is wrong. I, it does... We want it to be AG's length. And that works. Holy crap. It works. Kind of. Um, we add the peak here. That should work. Now, if we add pass tags, um, test pass tags, um, um, no symbol. We just put the no symbol there. And then we will check that it does absolutely nothing. And I didn't tell it to run the test. Um, we also need to put some comments. And put these aux things up here. Passes tags and following white space. Passes nothing if there's no at symbol. And that fails, it will always do that. So let's do expect. Um, and do expect just seems to hard code spaces, which explains why it's broken. So it's not 64, but it's 104. That is the issue for some reason. What's what's one oh four? D capital D or lowercase H. Oh yeah. Lowercase H. So for some reason um oh that's right there is no symbol to even pass um we also want to see that 
Um, classes, uh, let's say empty. Where do you want to put this? No tag data. So if there's no tag data. Wait, how does this work? How do we tell if there's an actual tag that's been passed? So we have at not passed. So in this case, we want to say that we've read by one plus zero plus spaces and it will be N Last tags. And we're going to assert out is zero. And that should be zero too. Just do these life hacks. The test pass empty works. But we have a problem if if we don't pass anything. We want to make sure that the the length is going to be uh, negative one, I guess. Or right, how are we going to check this? I guess we will reserve negative one as the, um, we didn't pass this at all value. That way our code can test it. So let's see if that works. Test pause. Instead, yep, it's 512. So when we do expect, we probably want to have where's do expect. Let's replace that with um, peak. Um, So we have do expect and do expect not. So we're going to compare it to at. You know what? We should probably just expand these a little bit for now. I think this is some premature um, factoring here. So that should be um, jump not equal return. This is copy word. This is going to be jump equal. Um, jump not equal. Not tag. And not tag. We'll just move CX negative one. And then when we return, that's going to be the amount passed, I guess. Although, we could just undo all that and do here and we move that there. We move negative one there by default.
That might work. Let's see if that works. So negative one means we did not pass that properly. Okay. Does n equals one ten? What is up with that? So data in, in out, where's one nine four? Huh? Data in out is 64. What's happened here? Why is it 64? Decimal 64 is at. So are we, are we quitting prematurely? Shouldn't be. Oh, we're setting the tags buffer. Right. Yeah, I think I'm the kind of person that needs to write tests when I program or my code will just turn into spaghetti when I'm not looking or when I'm looking. Actually, we can just club at AX here. Move AX at. Um, sub CX tags buffer length. Then we move that CX. Yeah, like you can see how I'm just changing code here. And if I messed up, it just tells me. All right. So now it's returning negative 192. Yeah, you know what? That's actually fine. Um. So if it doesn't pass, in out should be negative one, I guess. What's one nine two? Move AX negative one. Am I casting? Hang on. In out is a short, yeah. So what's, 192 is eight bits. That's, uh, because if it's a signed thing, it can only be, then that would be like 127. Why is it 192? I'm touching AX there and I put negative one. Is it the wrong Andianness? Um, I guess we can just borrow DI. So data in is eleven ten, and it got sixty four. Why?
That's because I broke these again. Oh, I didn't. I didn't break them. I broke them here. Instead of 11, it got negative 9,000. The fuck? Okay, I've messed up here. We've taken the the buffer length max. And we want to, I guess, subtract. Uh we're at this thing where it should be we subtract um CX. We should subtract an immediate from CX. Can we do that? No. We could borrow DI. No, we're using DI. Um, we could store. We could move that there. Then we could do sub that. And I think that would work. All right, so that code's pretty messy. That's fine. And we also want to error Error if there's no space. Ah, uh, we know that's going to happen. Um, mm -hmm. So we have our tags parser. Right. How do we clean this up? Um, what about, what about this? We have an unexpected term for when things aren't expected. Unexpected. And then in our unexpected, we will just move the immediate negative one there. And then we will jump over it to dot return here. I think that would work. Well, that is kind of bad still. 
Um, So we have move CX there. We don't need to do that. Um, then we subtract it there and save it there. Or we just put negative one. That might work. Move word. Instruction inspect expected. Move by it. Oh, you want me to put word negative one there. I got you. And that works. Hmm. I think this is a bit wrong though. I think we need to dump this and we need to use dot return for that again. And then we need to replace the expect here. So do peak compare al at, um, and then we want to jump not equals unexpected. And we will have to like, maybe make that a new macro such as um, okay something just went wrong there I thought I did basically the same thing there. What? Compare um, AL with the at symbol. And if it's not equal to that, then we read it. Thirty-two. What? So that's one five three. Test copy word is broken. What? It's the one thing that shouldn't be broken. It's just inline do expect here. And jump unexpected. So here's the here's the new rule. Um all right, so that seems to work. I'm not sure why it didn't work before. Alright, so if we go to the IRC syntax of what we're passing. You'll see here that it only requires like a one letter look ahead. Um, we have the command here, um, parameters. So we only need a one letter look ahead. Um, so let's kind of think about this. We might want to kind of refactor some of this. Um, 
then have a thing like setup buffer um Wait, that shouldn't work. Oh, um, yeah, so that should be that. Then we move this around and we drop that. You want to kind of abstract this, this idea of, um, we want to pass a word that begins with something and the space afterwards. Since we have here, we have here and we have with the trailing thing here. Um, and we want to also specify a buffer. So let's see, move tags buffer length. Negative one. So should we make this a macro or something? Maybe. I might have to take a quick uh, 10 minute break. Why? All right, you have to jump return there. But we need to kind of figure out what commands we're going to perhaps have. Um, I think we might want to move this buffer stuff to its own function called set buffer. Um, and then it's a bit tricky because the set buffer thing is going to be uh so we have oh, hang on we'll put medium level stuff and then we'll have um no we won't we won't worry about that for now um so we have past tags we want to make this into something that works for um uh, not just tags but um, we want to be able to give it a buffer, um, a buffer length max. So buffer length max, and we want to give it, um, a function to do like skip space or pass tags. Maybe that should be fine. Um, skip space, pass tags. Yeah, we want to give it a buffer length math and we want to give it um, pass with prefix uh, or pass. word. I think that'll work. So we have pass with prefix at and that's optional. So it's okay. Um, that with prefix, we have the like little prefix there. And then the command is just, we'll just say it's a, uh, we won't go too deep into handling it. Uh, syntax, we can just say it's a word. Params can be um, 
multiple actually params are either the prefix thing or a word or whatever so that's a that's a that's a joint thing and then we have crlf so we're going to have to add some choice operators in a bit but for now let's kind of think about um when we're passing we want to set the buffer so that would be tag buffer this would be prefix buffer command buffer param one buffer param two buffer um, so we want to be able to and that's also different from the actual command so we want to be able to give it a buffer and a function to do something perhaps we could I don't know, perhaps we could untangle this and have it so that um, if CX is negative one, no, um, maybe we should just return the amount passed. Um, no, hmm, I feel like this should be something higher level. Uh, but I'll have a quick break too. Um, be right back. I'm back. All right. So here's something to think about. Hey, Kaz. Um, we have different types of forms of things like we have the following forms. We have. Um, following forms, we have. Uh, we have I'm, I'm busy. We have I have to yell at people tell them I'm busy. And um, we have the following forms. We have a word with white space, uh, a word. Um, we have prefix, uh, it's just difficult, okay? Because this syntax here doesn't make any sense to me. It should be something like, um, these should be more like decisions, right? So, because uh, we have three different things. We have um, copying instructions, we have decision instructions, and uh, we have optional instructions. And we have decision instructions. So, when we want to copy something, we have, we have like copy word and skip spaces. Um, now this thing just copies a word. So what we could say is pass tags is just a thing. What pass tags does copies word plus skip spaces. It does that with the actual syntax. Um, it, it sets the buffer for copying. Um, it will, let's say it will, this is where the thing that's weird about it come in, comes in. Um, it will decide whether to go ahead based on a prefix. So syntax. Um, buffer stuff. We have decision stuff, I guess. 
So that decides whether to go ahead based on a prefix. Um, and I also realize here that we don't actually need to worry too much about the buffer length. Um, well, we don't need to have too much complicated stuff because if we pull out the decision stuff and the buffer stuff, um, we could actually, right now it's intertwined. The buffer stuff gets changed based on the decision, but we could actually have um, a function, a buffer function that um, sets the buffer, right? Uh, sets buffer max. So that's di sets buffer max. Um, then we also want to set the buffer length. And the other thing is we want to set whether buffer was written. So setting the buffer length is easy. We just set um, the written length. We can calculate that. Setting whether the buffer was written is difficult, um, but we can also just see if um, we can actually do this by saying, was anything consumed from the read buffer? So the idea here is that we have pass tags. Um, it copies a word, it skips spaces, etc. Um, now we have buffer stuff and that will set the buffer. And this will do all kinds of syntax stuff and then it will set um, whether um, it will set the length, but it will also set whether it was written based on whether the syntax actually read stuff. And the decision stuff is also a little tricky, but I think we can probably get that down to um, I guess based on what gets read. So we can decide based on if things were read or not. So in this case, um, we just need a buffer function that wraps or sets the current thing. So we set the buffer to tags. Then we try and read the at tag with all that stuff. And then we set whether it was written and whatever. And then based on that, we could do something else, such as in this situation here, um, this is a different piece of syntax. Uh, and then we have, um, or we could do middle and parameters. So let's try and go with that for now. So we're going to try and add a um, two buffer function. And what will it do? Um, well, we can pass arguments on the stack, can't we? We just need to No, we can't because this is not a stack based language. Um, when we push something, we'll have the return thing for that. Um, we want to be able to pass anything to our pass tags. We're going to replace pass tags with um, pass. Pass um, if starts with or something like that. So let's do like global pass if. Um, I guess pass word if. Or what are we going to call this? What do we call word in a white space? 
Um, I guess we can just call it password if. And what that will do is we will have password if it will do a peek. It will compare it to I mean, we could also just do multiple of these and just make a macro um, or pass a different register. Not sure. Oh, if we make the buffer thing not consume AX, if we pass through AX, then we will be able to compare it against AH. Um, and that would actually be do, do peak, compare that, um, jump, not equal, return. And then we want to do read, uh, skip the conditioned, skip the, the character. Then you want to do pass copy word do pass skip space and then return just does red. So that might work. And then we will refactor it so that this actually does password if, and then we move um, AL at. So we do password if there. And we're going to instead wrap it so we have our password if. And yeah, we're wrapping it password if. We will move that and then we will subtract from that. But um, we will have to track the old have to track how much was read. Um, how do we do that? <coughs> I guess we could return. We could um, return AX telling us um, if we could return the length passed, I guess. So move AX, the length red. Yeah, we'll do that. So move AX, BX, move, um, hmm, sub AX, BX. That would be inverted though. I guess. We move it, we move zero there. Uh, we do peak, we move, ah, uh, but that, if the peak, no, we'll just do that. Move AX, BX, after, A kept free, what's up? Uh, all right, so move AX, We compare AX, then we move AX, we move the BX. Um, no, we should, sub we want to subtract it at the end. We want to subtract BX from AX. No, the other way around. Shit, BX is going to be bigger. That'll be it. AX is the current value. BX is the new value. So, If we sub AX, from, if we sub BX from AX, it'll be inverted, it'll be negative. Then we can negate AX. And then we do password if, and we'll, um, if it's zero, we will jump to unexpected. Otherwise, we will jump to return. 
actually we would jump if it's not zero we would jump to return otherwise we would handle expect it there all right let's see if this works password if incrementally redefined how about you 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 f off okay You flick off. Data in out. Oh, that's right. Um, we're actually returning the amount red, I guess. Um, hmm. Why is it returning? Whatcom? Yeah, I'm using Whatcom and NASM. It's a lot of fun. Do you like DOS programming? Kept free? Um, how the hell do I like? Oh, I know. Um, when we do a return, we can compare AX and BX. And if it's a zero, so if it's not zero, is twenty twenty two today? Yeah. I also wrote my own unit tests because this is fine. Um, so in out, instead of being N, uh, we want it to be <laughs> overachiever, please. No. Um, Should this really be comparing the values? No, it should not. Um, this should be doing it. Ah, uh, but we've run out of registers. I see. But we can push the register. We can push BX. Ah, look, we have a stack. Time traveler, um, do peak, do expect, wait, no, jump, not equal return. So pass word if, passes a word if we've got an at there. And then we will pop that into AX. Um, we will compare AX and BX. And we will return. And that should, you know, accidentally give us like the length or something, I don't know. What would you do if your body kept waking you up earlier and earlier? Um, that's the opposite of what my body does. So I kind of, I kind of know what that is. In out is not 110. What's 110? N. So it's not N. What line is this? 194? Yeah, so in out should not be 110 there. It should be tags length, maybe? Um, it should be red amount. What 
Why is it 25? Why do you like that? Oh, 25 is a space? No, it's not. Why is it 25? What's 25? All right. So we pop AX, which is BX, we compare it. So BX would be the length. 32 is space, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, I was thinking of 20, wait. Does this say 32? No, it says 25. So this is just putting, let's just subtract AX from BX. And, uh, X86 does not want me to use a register for this. Um, uh, I know. I will push AX here and I will pop AX. And then it will be fine. Actually, I can just, yeah, we can preserve AX. See, easy peasy. There, we've got zero. So we can just actually say that doesn't matter. All right, so this actually works, I think. We'll see. Uh, I'm also checking that. Shouldn't be doing that. Um, that should be fine. So do you have experience with the AD86 assembly? 194. Oh, that should be that. Yes, year. Data read length read doesn't equals 10, got 25. What the hell? Data dot length read is not 10, it's 25. What experience do you have? Data dot length read is twenty five. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two. That's 15. Is it reading the entire string? Why? Don't do that. Ah, uh, Turbo Pascal. What did you use the assembler for? Anything cool? So you push BX. Which is our length thread. Ah, the DOS API. That's that of all the APIs, that is an API.
What is this? Compare AL, AH? I mean, I guess I could... I guess we could squeeze some registers a bit, but that's not gonna work, is it? Are we gonna have to spill? Um, damn it. I'm running out of registers. I hate it. All right. Um, Let's just put that as an at there for now, and we won't touch that. And I'm not seeing the buffer links, got it. Um, I've seen Calibri OS. I haven't actually played with it though. I mean, I installed it once in a VM and it was really, really fast. What am I doing now? I can just do, if it's not zero, we can just return. Otherwise we can just. Do that. Delphi SDK. So how does that work? Right, so this code supposedly works. And that's kind of important. But we're spilling, we're spilling big time. And we're gonna spill even more. Fuck, we're gonna spill more once we start passing arguments here. Um. I think I have a few tricks up my sleeve though. Um, so we've managed to separate a kind of parser thing here, um, but we still need to pass arguments and we just don't have the registers. We're using all our registers. Begin a right length, hello world end. Compile and then run under Colibri OS. That's pretty cool. I've been, wanting to work on my own programming language. Um, but that's a very slow process. If we could reclaim BX and CX, things might be fine, but that would require null termination. Let's try and find something else. Okay, so. Hmm. So we have pass tags here. 
Um, and we, we, this is basically going to be the um, pass with buffer. So we might have to split this up into perhaps three pieces. Um, where we set the buffer and then finish the buffer. So we would write stuff like this. Um, we would write something like uh, pass with buffer, tags buffer, tags buffer, lengths max. Tags buffer length, and then we would run password if at, which would set the AX register, and then pass with buffer. Hey DPA, enjoy sleep. Done. Oh, well, that's kind of nasty. Um, we're going to have to pass stuff by the stack, which pisses me off, but uh, I guess we, we could try it. Yeah, thanks for the luck. I need all the luck I can get. Um, alternately, we could use thunks. Because right now when we pass with buffer, we're also going to have to specify um, the, de the funk and the AX register, which isn't great. We might have to just macker up some code that composes all this together for us, like a, uh, like some kind of compiler. Um, where password if is a macro. And then we have the pass tags and stuff. It's not very testable though. Compiler for the thing. No. We must stay true to the assembly goal. Um, so this would kind of be what things would be. Um, we would push, we basically push funk, push AX. Push tags, buffer length, push the length max. Shit, we'd need a register for that. Hmm. Oh no, SpaghettiO. I guess we could also, instead of, all right, instead of pushing and popping, we could just read from the stack, right? Temporarily. The only problem is we don't have really like a temporary register. You want V8? That's pretty good. Invoke command slash macro in FASM. I'm using NASM, but, uh, oh, that's probably what FASM has. Yes, but the problem is, is that if I start using macros, it's going to be harder for me to test these kind of things that join together. Um, hmm. Hmm.
Perhaps this is the wrong way to do it. So I have some issues here. The first issue is that I have to start pushing and pulling all these different um, values. So um, if I drop dncx here, and we just say we set the buffer each time and require the caller to set that, that could help. The hell? Oh, what? The length's written is clobbered. Length right is not 16, it is 501. What? Oh, because I do actually use CX briefly for that. Um. Hmm. But DI, we definitely can get rid of DI. So if we were saying that we were going to have the user call stuff, um, what the hell is AX being used for? So AX has the old value. So we could push that to the stack. The X is the old read value. So we could push that to the stack. Um, Damn, that's editing DI. Oh yeah, because we're, of course, we're setting DI. Um, hmm. There's like five different functions in here. We have the um, kind of prelude and stuff. And then we have the password if. And we can't just. We could push AX here. Um, pop AH maybe. And then we could move AX at, perhaps that would work. Okay, we can't pop AH, can we pop AL? Oh shit, we can't. We can only pop a word size from the stack at once, so that's not gonna work. All right. What? We can't index from the stack pointer either. That's an idea. We aren't using the base pointer. We could point to some data structure. Or perhaps, I don't know. Perhaps we shouldn't bother too much with 
testing these primitives, but instead um, making some macros here. So how about that? Let's say macro password if. Um, do if do pass if um, zero arguments. Oh, one argument to peak compare that. And then we go to, we don't have a return for that though. Um, hmm. Um, if return. Oh, but then those do return too. Oh, but I have a solution for that. Um, uh, password if. Can we do like a unique name? Um, let's search that up. Nazem label unique name. Oh God, something's eating my Firefox. Why is Firefox so trashy? Is this what video games are like? Yes. All right. So is there a way to, yeah. Actually, we just need to instantiate. Um, yeah, we can just do that. Let's just worry about this for now. And macro, so we have macro and macro uh, password if one. Um, do, uh, sorry, um, uh, password if, so then we could just do, oh, but then that wouldn't work. All right. No, so this would insist, this would create some code, um, make password if. Um, if, uh, so that's not going to work. I would have to, uh, we're going to have to, yeah. Hmm. I think the only way to solve this is to just duplicate code everywhere. That's not what I want. It's not the smart way to do this. That's like C++ template programming. Hmm.
What's where? What's up? All right, we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to create a thunk or something. And I think the thunk will have to use the base pointer. So, BP thunk. Um, this is more of a struct. So yeah, we're going to have password if. Um, let's try and figure out this AX thing first. Ah, uh, shit. Um, push BX, move, um, a, uh, move B AX to BX. Push AX. Shit, what? We really just need another register. You know, we could borrow the BP register. Maybe. Actually, we could use AX. Um, so peak and read, we could say that they use, um, um, AL. So what does it do there? They do use AL. Um, so we go. A uh, we uh, compare A L A H compare, and then we move A H with the value. All right, that's a little bit tricky. So we have two registers there, which is kind of okay. All right, so now this, so password if is reusable. So now we just need to figure out how to change pass tags to like, um, Pass with buffer. And so we would want to say push tags buffer. Um, push tags buffer len max. Should pass with buffer just be a macro? Yeah, I kind of think so. Um, that way other functions can use it. Um, so let's say macro pass um, push pass buffer. And we do the um, buff max length righto so we would push di that would be three so we'd push one is buff two is max and Three is that, and then we would do push pass buffer 
tag buffer, tag buffer, max length, then max. Buffer length. And let's see if that kind of works. And we would have pop, pass buffer, pop, pop, pass buffer. And then we would put the Thanks. Oh, pass buffer tag buffer length. This might work. Instruction inspected. What? It is an instruction, kind of. Then we would have pop pass buffer zero, and that would be in macro. Wait a second, what's pop ax doing there? Oh, it's the old. Okay. Why does it say instruction inspected? Is it because of that? Should I put that there? And that? There. One six nine. One seven four. That's kind of recursive. One six eight instruction inspected. Why? What's, why does it say that? Tag buffer length not defined. Yeah, it is. Symbol tag buffer length not defined. It's not. It's tags buffer. Is that why it's upset at me?
like I would say. It still says instruction expected. What if I just delete everything from there? But it has the, huh? Invalid co combination of opcode and operands. Bro. Oh, pass with buffer. That just ruins the page. Meow meow. Parser instruction expected. Why? Should I set that to like four? Push pass buffer. Like it doesn't even know that I'm telling it to use a macro. Set pass buffer length. That works. So why is my push pass buffer macro not working? So if I do that there, maybe I just need to set that to like one. Maybe I don't need to add these numbers at all. Expects a parameter account. So I put three there. Put nothing in there. Set that to two. Set that to one. And then that kind of works. But if I do that to two, do I have to have commas? Oh shit, I think that might be what it is. Yeah. God damn it, the length right doesn't equal 16. Which file is broken? This one, test pass tags normal. So length right is not 16. All right, yeah, that makes sense. Something is messed up there. All right, so at the start, we push AX and BX. Why do we push AX? Uh, unclear, let's just remove that for now. And then at return, we'll move AX zero. Uh, push BX, we need that for later. Um, that is where pop AX goes.
Mm -hmm. Push DI there. And CX. We actually don't need these path buffer things. These are only specifically um, for that junk. And that works. They push path bu pass buffer buffer here. We should probably set it to be like. Wait no. Um, this should be about this move CX zero. Uh, yeah, we're just saving and restoring those because we're trampling them. Um, push path, but pass buffer here is where we, we're not pushing it. We're going set pass buffer. And that kind of works. That should be a push and a pop. Okay, so. This jumps to return though, so. We subtract that, we pop it, we compare it. Um, then we jump to return if it's smaller. We really wanna just move negative one to it. Um, if it didn't write at all. Or didn't pass successfully. Actually, I, my brain is having a fuzzy moment here. I think perhaps we could move this over to here. We're both fuzzy boys. I think that might be premature macro macro macroization. So we push the length there. All right, so we set the length there. We pop the buffer length. And then we compare it. And depending on that, um, we could do a conditional. And in this case, the conditional here is negative one.
that's not the prettiest code. But it's a lot better than before, I believe. We now have code that lets us handle password if. We now have push path pass buffer. Um, I guess we should put that up here. We have password if, and then we have pass tags. And that's a combination of password if, so. It's actually a wrapper of um, the past stuff. This stuff should be. That would be the stuff that is actually used throughout um, some code. So. We've gotten that done. So. Over here, we have this. And I think we're getting to the case where, um, we need some better testing. You see, this tests pass tags, but we're going to have to have, if we go down to our pass messages thing, it would have very good testing, you say. Yeah. It would um, run pass tags here. Or rather, um, Like we, it would run just this. We'd remove, basically, um, we're at the point where we're going to need to start thinking of some full messages to test. And so we would need a message to test um, message types with tags, without tags, with empty tags with prefix, without prefix, with empty prefix, um, has command, um, has one param, um, has two params, Last param has a trailing thing. So we're going to have to start fuzzing this a bit, I think. Um, let's remove this junk. Basically, we're getting to the point where I think we've tested the primitives. And we're going to have to start fuzzing. Um, this. So let's do, I guess, if zero for that. And if, um, and we'd have to make another thing for it where we just run the function and we check that if we copy something to it, um, we would have a struct that has, you know, what we expect. And then we would generate a message based on that. Um, and we'd be a little bit exhaustive, I guess. 
Um, I don't know how much we'd have to fuzz this. I guess we could easily, if we're going to be trusting of the state of stuff, we could test this by having a kind of canonical message. Um, but fuzzing is a lot fun. It's a lot more fun. So once we do the fuzzing, uh, we might, we'll be able to pass a hell actually. I think next stream we will, oh, we also need TRLF. Next stream, I think we will have the parser finished. Um, which is a lot. You know, it's weird. I don't think. Oh yeah, um, we might have to also blacklist some characters and that kind of I don't know, that's another issue. So we want to only pass a character and we want to, we want a um, peak or read or something. Um, that reads, we want to read character, read character, reads anything but null CRLF. Yeah, so we'll just switch to that for our passing stuff. Um, yeah, um, and I think peak, we'll have to think about how that connects with peak because we are doing like um peak then we check it um yeah we might have to by default filter those out um we maybe if we switch to null termination some of this will be better but i don't know we can do that later but we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, yeah. Good job, Jukes. Yeah. I mean, we're at the point where like, how, mu how much of our code would I say we've, we're testing? Uh, we have some tests for MTCP. Weirdly enough, um, this stuff is basically tested manually. Um, logging. We've tested that manually. Um, logic, let's remove the pass stop back. What's state? That seems to work. Uh, I don't know why I'm being like, I guess testing with the parser is required here because it's so complicated. Um, and when you write complicated code, and if I just put this here, if we, now that we've kind of removed those test checks, we can just do this. And that's pass tags. And then we would have pass prefix, which would basically be a copy of that. And then we would have, then we would put that all together and start fuzzing it a little bit. Um, how the fuzzing is done, not too sure. We probably want to fuzz it from C just so we get the internals there. Um, but that's it for this stream. I'll be back next week, probably. Um, we're finally making some progress. We still have a lot to do. Um, I don't like how we're calling 
SN printf from the logger. Uh, let's put place SN printf. We will have to do idle, not idle state, but whatever. Um, but we're getting there. We're going a lot further than we thought we would. Um, yeah. So that's it for now. Good, goodbye, everyone.